So welcome back to the channel, How To Done Right, where we do the research so you don't have to. It's a great channel. Stay tuned for this uh, part three of the winemaking series, and let's get right into it. I do apologize I know I said this was gonna be a three-part wine video but I just don't want that last video of bottling to be too long and and plus I wanted to have the filtering piece because that's such an important process of winemaking getting all the particles the fine particles out of your wine the refining process to make it better and better each time assuming this is part three part four I promise will be the finalized video I am planning on doing a bunch of separate videos on winemaking, such as how I sanitize my equipment, how I back sweeten wine. Uh, you'll see a little bit, bit of that in, uh, in the part four video. So today we're gonna get right into filtering of the wine. This is one of the crucial parts of making wine, and I'm gonna give you the absolute easiest way to do it. Uh, I've tested two different methods. I find this one is the easiest, and it creates a great product. You can hear, this is the strawberry. Um, it's crystal clear, no particles in there. This would be the strawberry kiwi I made. Um, again, it, it's probably hard to see on the camera, but it is very crystal clear wine. Um, what you saw in video one and two was the mixed berry. Uh, you can see it, it's crystal clear. I apologize that I didn't get to put the mixed berry all the way through, but we're gonna pick up right where we left off with this new batch of wine I started, and it's called Strawberry Pomegranate, and it looks amazing. I also wanna give a shout out to my other channel. It's called Along for the Journey, where we do travel videos, vacation videos, and show you things to do maybe in your area. Uh, but make sure you check that out. I'll put a link in the description. Make sure you subscribe to that channel as well. That one's kind of taken up some of my summer time. So uh, now that we're getting back into winter, you'll be seeing more on this channel. So uh, I apologize for the delay, but uh, that was the reason I was concentrating on my other YouTube channel, Along for the Journey. Check it out. So there's no right or wrong way to filter wine. I just am gonna give you the easiest in my opinion. I've tried a couple of different methods. I've tried this one here where you use filters to filter it out. Uh, it's called Vib Vibrite Wine Filter Kit. But again, comes with hoses, filters. You gotta put filters in them. Uh, it kinda looks like this. Uh, it, it's just a lot of work. And let me tell you, it's a total mess also. The best way to filter your wine is one simple product and it's called bentonite. And it's basically like a clay-based material that will uh, attract the particles in your wine and pull them down to the bottom of the, your uh, container, your carboy. Um, and then it makes it easier to filter out that just pure wine that's going to be crystal clear at the end of the process. So when do you know when it's time to put your bentonite into your wine? It would be the very last racking. Normally, most winemakers uh, will tell you two to four rackings. Uh, I'm probably around three to four myself because again, I want a crystal clear wine as, as everybody strives to get. Uh, but you'll know when that wine starts to turn clear that when you rack it, that is when you want to put it into your wine to, to pull the particles. Uh, the remaining suspended particles out of your wine. And then once you add your bentonite and it sits for another 30 to 40 days, that next racking is gonna be your bottling racking and your sweetening of the wine. Um, so again, it's a crucial process. You've gotta use bentonite or some, some other filtering. I'm just gonna give you the easy way and show you how, you, how to use this product. Also, the filtering your wine, again, is one of the most important steps of your winemaking process. I know I originally said this was gonna be a three-part series. I'm gonna turn it into a four-part series because I think uh, this filtering and how to use the bentonite is that important. Um, even if people would just pick up this video, they'll see how I use it to uh, filter wine. And then I promise you the next step will be 
the uh, final product, the bottling, and how to get prepared and finish your wine. So this is where I'm kind of speeding up this section because you've already seen it. I'm just getting it up to date with this new batch of wine that I'm doing, this strawberry pomegranate. When I made this strawberry pomegranate wine, uh, I was able to uh, use a six gallon bucket and usually that filters out to about a five gallon carboy. I had a lot extra here because I used some juice, the pomegranate juice to make this wine. So that's why you're gonna see a uh, five gallon vessel and a one gallon vessel. You'll notice that I, it seems like I'm wasting a lot, but I'm, I really wanna get this down to a five gallon bucket. So when I'm racking this, I'm staying far away from that sediment. I don't want any yeast in there, any of that, uh, that pulp. Um, so that's why I, I have that extra one gallon. That's what I'm planning on topping off the five gallon carboy with. So when using bentonite to uh, mix a slurry, which is basically like you're mixing the clay mixture, uh, you just want to make sure you just follow the directions. It calls for one and a third quarter cup of water, and then you want to add four teaspoons of the bentonite. So let's go ahead and do that, and then I'm going to show you how we mix this up. So there we got our four teaspoons of bentonite, and we're just going to stir this it's it's not one of my favorite things to do uh, because it can take be time consuming so we'll speed this up a little bit uh, but you kind of want to just get everything kind of dissolved you have to maybe stir your use your finger a little bit to get some of the pieces broken up but it is very important you get this fairly smooth as you can just because that's what's going to attract the particles in your wine So you can see that's about the consistency you want right there. Uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to put this in our new clean sanitized carboy. And again, remember I've sanitized my hands, the equipment every single time. Uh, it is crucial. I'm going to do a whole separate video on how to use star sand sanitizer. Thanks for a lot of you who have given some of your great comments on how you use uh, star stand uh, versus rinsing versus non rinsing. And I've already taken some of you guys' advice. So stay tuned. I'm going to do a separate video on its sanitation process of, of your wine equipment. Uh, just because it, it is a very important part of the process. So now we got our sanitized carboy. And we're just going to pour our bent, bentonite in this funnel. And just kind of, you know, force it down in, you know, as much as we can here. You are going to have some lumps and you're going to have to do this, but you get as much as you can off there. And again, what you're going to see our next part of the process is we're going to put the wine in here and that's going to even mix this up more. And then I'll show you how we finish this process. There's something we gotta do each day. So you can see this wine, it's getting pretty clear. And you know it's time to use the bentonite when you can almost start to see your hand through here. It's a beautiful color too.
right, so now we got the bentonite in. You're gonna see I always, when I'm sanitizing equipment, I always fill up a bottle here and I will use this to uh, do my stir stick because this bentonite, I will wanna be stirring the next uh, three to four days. So I will let this sit here for a, a few seconds. Uh, and then I'm gonna give this a stir. All right, is, is this the most beautiful color wine you have ever seen? It is beautiful. Again, it's strawberry pomegranate. Uh, anybody wants the recipe, again, the recipe I did in video one will cover any fruit. Uh, this I did a modify a little bit because of the pomegranate juice I put in it. Uh, but again, I just tasted it. It tastes amazing. One thing you want to do along each process is taste it as you go. It's not going to hurt you. I don't know if you can see down here, but that's all the bentonite, which, you know, splashed when I was putting it in. So I'm going to be stirring this uh, once a day for the next three to four days. I want to get as much of that bentonite suspended in here to pull out the fruit particles or anything that's left. And then after about four days, I will just let it sit for another 30 to 45 days. Uh, you'll see all the bentonite. This will become crystal clear. You'll be able to see your hand through it. Uh, you can, uh, you know, a little bit right now, but uh, again, it's going to be a great product when it's finished. Uh, so let's give it a stir. And also you want to make sure again, you didn't see off camera, but as soon as I rack this, I covered this up with a towel so no light can get to it. And I put the uh, cap in just so no oxygen can uh, get into it as well. So uh, let's give it a stir. Also, if anybody wants to see the recipe that I've used for this strawberry pomegranate wine, uh, just let me know in the comment section. Again, if you've watched video one, the recipe can be used for any fruit. The only difference will be how much fruit I put in versus the pomegranate juice. And just make sure you're liking and subscribing to this channel. We're gonna have a lot of great information coming down the line here, uh, from barbecuing, to more wine videos, to uh, reviews on products. There's so much coming, you do not wanna miss it. Click that notification bell.